Well, ladies and gentlemen, today I want to talk to you about a very serious topic. And this serious topic is something that I believe will help you. And you guys have already seen the title of today's message. And I promise I won't take a lot of your time, but I really, really feel like you guys need to understand and need to hear what I have to say about this topic. What I need you to understand is that prayer is a mysteriously wonderful gift that has been given to us by God, our creator. See people, prayer allows us to communicate and commune with God in an intimate way. In our carnal mind, prayer doesn't really make sense sometimes. And sometimes we relegate prayer to just the mumblings of a few words followed by amen. But prayer is far more than that. It really is, people. Prayer is more than just speaking words. Prayer goes deeper than just mere verbal communication. The moment you engage in prayer, you are actually connecting to another realm. The Bible calls this the spiritual realm. It is the realm where God is clothed in his full power and glory. See, prayer transcends, transcends the physical, natural realm that we see, feel, touch, and taste. Prayer transcends all of that. It goes far beyond our natural dimension. See, as of now, we only know and we only can operate in this physical 3D, three-dimensional realm. You know, forward, backwards, up, down, left, right. You know, this is the 3D realm. But with prayer, it's like a communication line that can break through all known dimensions and connect us to the very throne room and heart of God. That's what I need you guys to understand. Prayer transcends us from this 3D realm that we live in. And see, let me remind you that I was listening to some NASA scientists talk the other day and how they were saying that, you know, the, end, the universe that they know of does have an end and they don't know what's on the other side of it. And they said, well, that's just another dimension. It's an unknown dimension. Scientists say there are many unknown dimensions. We only know of three. But I'm telling you that prayer can transcend all dimensions and it transports your words to the very throne room of God himself. In short, the moment you engage in prayer, you're connecting to God Almighty, the source of all life. The wonderful thing about prayer, especially if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, is that you have the confidence in knowing that he hears every word you speak and every thought you have. That's prayer, people. See, the Bible says in Ephesians 3.20 that we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask with our mouth or even think. So what is prayer? How do you do it? Prayer is simply you humbling yourself to communicate and commune with God. It all starts with you recognizing that there is someone way bigger than you who has the power to alter time, space, and matter. But there are rules. So let's go over these rules real quick. I'm going to give you four basic rules of prayer. The first rule is found in John chapter 15, verse 16, where Jesus Christ says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear much fruit 
and that your fruit should remain that wherever I, that whatever you ask in the Father in my name, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, not my name, Raphael, but in Jesus, Jesus is talking, in my name, he may give it to you. The first rule is that you must ask the Father God in the name of Jesus. What? I'll repeat. The first rule is that you must ask the Father who is God, Father God, in the name of Jesus. You might be wondering, why does it have to be in the name of Jesus? The short answer is because God said so. The long answer is because, as you know, in this world, there are many gods and many beliefs about God. So God gave us a way to identify who he is and which God we should be praying to. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. See, you can call God Hashem, Jehovah, Elohim, but he said that whatever you ask of him, you must do it in the name of Jesus. That name will get his undivided attention. But let me also say that the name of Jesus is not some magical word or some magical name that you just blurt out at random and expect an intelligent God to just ignorantly and blindly respond. I mean, God's not stupid. <laughs> That's not how he works. <laughs> you know, he's, I can use some examples of this stuff. The name of Jesus only works when it is spoken by faith, which leads into the second rule. The second rule is this. It's found in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 where the Apostle Paul teaches, and I quote, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace which we stand and rejoice in hope by the glory of God. This second rule is simple. You must have faith in Jesus Christ. You must believe that he is who he said he is. He is the savior of mankind. Without him, the world would be hopeless. Let's go down a quick rabbit trail real quick. Can you imagine what the world would be like if Jesus had never existed, if he had never came? Whenever you have time, I want you to research how cruel and evil the world was before Jesus Christ came on the planet. The earth was not a very benevolent place by any way, by any means, you got to understand, before Jesus Christ came on this planet, this place was not a very nice place. Serving man-made gods and murders and through the sacrificing and killing of babies. And it was a horrible place. And if you were poor, there was no hope for you. But anyway, don't let me get off on this rabbit trail. Let me get back on track. <laughs> the third rule of prayer is found in James chapter 4, verse 3. And it says this. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. You heard that? Can you guess what the third rule is? Simply put, don't expect God to answer selfish, greedy prayers. God is not stupid. You can't fool him with your words. He knows your thoughts and he knows the intent of your heart. He can tell when you're praying out of selfishness or greed. You can't trick the guy. I'm telling you, you can't trick God. For example, let me give you some stupid, let me, I'm gonna give you an example of some of the stupid things I've seen and heard, especially on the internet. Some of you guys might be able to, to attest to these stories as well. For example, I was watching a, a video on YouTube where a young man was trying to get this girl to come home with him. And he said this quick prayer, oh, please God, let this girl come home with me tonight, amen. Now, even though it was humorous, it was a bit sad how the world portrayed prayer as this meaningless babble for one's desires to be, to be fulfilled like the wishes from a genie. I mean, come on. Let me just get this right off the cuff. I'm just, I'm just going to tell you what I need to say about this. 
And I want you guys to listen to me real quick. God is not your genie. He doesn't live in a bottle. He's not here to grant your wishes. We do not tell him what we want him to do. Do you understand me? We do not tell the almighty God what we want him to do. He tells us what to do. He is God. We are not, and we just simply obey him. Do you understand? That's, that's it. Now, there's a fourth rule I need to go over with you. The fourth rule about prayer is found in James chapter 1, verse 6, where it reads, But let him ask in faith, no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave in the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from God. For he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. This fourth rule is connected to the second rule. See, the second rule states that you must have faith in Jesus Christ. But this fourth rule takes it one step further in that if you want your prayers to be received by God, you must not be double-minded. See, the biggest reason why many of you, uh, let me be honest, even me, the biggest reason why many of us aren't getting our prayers answered is because we are being too wishy-washy with our faith. One moment we believe in Jesus Christ, the next moment we doubt and even deny him. Oh, how easy it is for some of us to just turn our backs on God, the God of our salvation. It is strange that when trials and troubles enter our lives, we just want to say, you know what? Uh, I'm done with God. Screw this crap. I'm out of here. See, we have to learn to be steadfast in our faith, everybody. We have to get to the point where we, that we become like the Romans 838 Christian, where it states, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor other created thing. Nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. See, once you solidify your stance that no matter what happens, you're not going to turn your back or your faith or turn in or, or renounce your faith in Jesus Christ, then and only then will you see the power of God and the power of prayer and your prayer power increase and your prayers manifest because of what, not because of you, but because of God. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Also, as I close, I want you to know that there are many things about prayer that I didn't mention, but you can always find it simply by reading your Bible. I mean, come on, people, read your Bible. It's right there. Start in the New Testament and simply read the historical accounts of the things that happened when people prayed. It will build your faith. It will build your confidence. Look, everyone, prayer is a powerful gift that has been given to us to be used for good on this planet. It can be used to heal the sick. It can be used to heal the brokenhearted. It can be used to change the hearts and thoughts of men. It can, come on now, it can heal the drug addicted. It can, it can stop the wife abuser. And if you're confused, it can even help unconfuse you. It can be used to change the very fabric of time, space, and matter. How do we know this? Because it's written in our Bible. There are countless stories on how prayer changed things, on how prayer changed time, space, and matter. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Okay, look, I know some of y'all right now just, just like, Raph, you, you sound crazy. That sounds like some metaphysical bull crap. No, it's not. It's really real. Some of you are starting to question my comment on time, space, and matter. Well then, okay. Let me give you some scriptures to study before I go. That's the least I can do. Let's, let's look at how prayer changed the fabric of time. 
Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 through 13. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. Time. What about how a prayer changed space? Acts 8.38. Philip, the evangelist, was miraculously transported to another location. That's what it says, right? Read it. I, I would read it to you, but I ain't got time. But you go read it. How prayer changed the fat, the, the fabric of matter. Come on now. This, this is, this is going to hit you right here. You, you've read this numerous times, but you never understood that this is how prayer changed the, the fabric of matter itself. Matter. The stuff that we touch every day. Matter. John 2, John chapter 2, verse 9. Jesus turned the water, which is matter, into wine. Isn't that amazing? See, these are just a few things, but there are more examples in the Bible. You just need to take some time and read about it and simply just don't watch this video. Just, just go read. I mean, uh, <laughs> I wish I could just go out there right now and just grab you and like, read your Bible. There's some cool stuff in there, man. I'm telling you. Man, there's some cool stuff in there. You can, prayer is powerful, people. And sometimes we just don't want to pray. Why? Because the enemy knows that the moment you humble yourself and acknowledge God in the name of Jesus in your prayers, he knows that that prayer has the potential to change time space and matter wow that's prayer so anyway i can beat a dead horse <laughs> i promise not taking more of your time so i'm gonna close with this pray okay just pray so anyway i'm just gonna say goodbye but before i say goodbye i'm gonna say my famous slogan do as much good as you can while you can and the greatest thing, the greatest good that you can do right now is pray. Prayer is the greatest good you can do. Okay, people? God bless. I'm out. Bye.